All right, guys, this is the next part of our adaptation series, structural adaptations. So structural adaptations are inherited traits of the body structure or physical appearance that promotes an organism's ability to survive in certain environments. So they live in a certain place, and then their body over time has adapted and made them more um, efficient in living in that area. And that happened in genetically through inherited traits. Um, and that goes with natural selection. And natural selection, when organisms that are best suited for an environment will survive and reproduce. The ones not suited will die and that will um, keep the better genes around so that they can stay in that environment where they are most fit to live. Um, all right, so below you have this whole chart, and we're going to fill it out together. And so there's the biome in which we're going to talk just real briefly about, and then talk about the adaptation, the animal and its adaptation, and then the, the animal's adaptation and its function. So here we go. First, we have in the tundra. So in the far left-hand column, we just need to talk about the tundra. The tundra is cold and dry. So you should um, know that based on some of the animals there. Um, and then we're going to talk about these animals. So the penguin, its adaptation is blubber. And what's the function of blubber, do you think? Yep, to keep them warm. Then there's the musk ox. And the musk ox actually has two layers of fur. And what do you think its job is? If you had two layers of fur, it would keep you warm. Then we have um, this white rabbit. It has white fur or white hair or whatever you want to say. And its function is camouflage, right? Look at how well it blends into the snow. It's hard to see it. So it blends into its environment. And then I use this picture for the next two parts together um, so you can, because it illustrates both with just one picture. Um, the, flowering the flowering plants, um, their adaptation is they produce flowers. And what I mean by that is that in the tundra, the warm time is short. It's like a month long, maybe a month and a half of a tundra summer. And so they have to be able to um, bloom quickly and have pollination occur so that um, they can keep those flowers in that area. So pollination process, they have a short growing season. So they're able to bloom and pollinate in that short season. Then on that same picture, there is the leaf structure. They have small a small leaf structure. Sorry, that's a little choppy down there. It's hard to write in that bottom box so close to the edge. And um, what that means is its adaptation is to reduce water loss because when there's less surface area, there's less room for evaporation and the stomatas aren't, or there's fewer stomatas, so there's less water uh, leaving. All right, so that's all the tundra. Now we're going to move on to the temperate deciduous forest and that is where we live and as you know there's varying temperatures and precipitation although lately it feels like all it does is rain and it's January and we have like 50 degree weather which is pretty warm for this time of the year so we're definitely experiencing the various temp the varying temperature and precipitation um, the adaptation for these trees is that um, the, their leaves will fall off in the winter or in the fall and the winter. You know, they turn brown and then they fall off. And the function for that is it conserves energy um, and it reduces moisture loss. And what would happen is if they were able to keep their leaves year-round and then we had a hard freeze, the water in the leaves would freeze and that would damage the tissues for in the leaves and that would end up hurting the tree overall so 
They stop going through photosynthesis. The leaves turn brown. They fall off. It conserves their energy for the winter because they're not having to produce um, all the stuff that goes with the leaves and the food. And then they're not having to go through photosynthesis. And then that way it um, protects them in the long run for the cold winters. All right. Next, the desert. So for the first two boxes, uh, well, let's talk about the desert first. So you should know the desert is dry and it has hot days and cold nights. Um, and then the first two words, tap roots and horizontal roots, we're going to use that same picture. And the top, um, a tap root can go down 20 to 30 feet. And let me get a pen and I'll gonna circle up the tap root. So this long one is a tap root and it can go down 20 or 30 feet. So that's its adap adaptation. And why? Think about a desert. There's not much rain there. And so when it does rain, um, it needs to be able to, if it's not raining, if it's a dry period, it's got to be able to reach the water um, in the um, underground table. So like Everywhere has water a certain depth down, and so these can grow to be like 20 or 30 feet down so that they can reach the water table. Not the stuff that's there from the rain, just the stuff that's in our Earth's crust. All right, and then we have the horizontal roots, which are these ones that branch this way out, and they grow long and shallow um, just below the surface. Because on the infrequent amount of time that it does rain, when it does, they want to get as much water absorbed as they can quickly before it evaporates. And so the further out they are, the more they can get quickly because it's not going to soak down into the soil. It's only going to be able to penetrate the first layer or so of soil. And so the shallow roots allow them to get that water in as fast as it can. Um, and then next, we have spines on the little cactus, and the spines, um, reduce water loss because there's a small surface area, and they don't have to go through photosynthesis, and so it conserves water. Oh, a jackrabbit. So the jackrabbit's ears, as you can see, are super big, and I'm going to make this picture really big for a second and see if I can zoom in. Let me see if I drew an arrow or not. The reason it's ears, oh, there's the arrow, okay. So if you can see what that arrow is pointing to, those right there are the, um, and right there are the, it's the blood vessels in the ears. And so when the air hits the ears that are so large, it's able to, get onto that cool and cool our ears down and it cools let me slide that back over the blood and then that circulates through their body and it helps cool the rabbit down because again it's hot there so it helps keep the rabbit cool in the hot because of its super large ears I think that's so cool anyways um, the next one are suckle succulents those are those little plants that you've seen and they store water in the roots and the stem and in the fruit. And so that way, its function is so that they have water during the dry periods. Again, because you're in the desert and there are dry periods there. All right, so then we're moving on to um, the um, taiga biome. And basically, that is the coniferous forest. Let me readjust that so you can see those words. Um, and here we have cold, snowy winter with quick, mild summers. And um, this first one might be my favorite. Is the ermine? Is this little cute little animal right here? And in the fall and winter, or in the fall, summer and fall, it has brown fur. And in the winter, it turns white and has white fur. And so you can see just by looking at the picture in the fall and winter when it's, uh, excuse me, the fall and summer when it's got the brown fur. Look at it's blending in here to the grassy area. 
and in the winter is blending into its environment here, so its function is for camouflage. But look at how cute that animal is. That might be my favorite. Um, next, we have in this area, we have tree shape. Think of a Christmas tree like this right here. Um, you can draw that if you want. Oh, that's a horrible Christmas tree. I won't draw a Christmas tree. Um, the tree shape is designed that way so it can shed snow and not be weighed down by snow. Helps protect itself. And then the evergreens right here, um, they keep their needles. And because they're needles and not leaves, they can serve energy. It also limits water loss um, because, again, just like the cactus had those spines to limit water loss and conserve energy, same theory. These are long and skinny. There's not much surface area, and it helps um, them survive. All right, next we're moving on to the tropical rainforest. The tropical rainforest is hot and rainy. It's also the most diverse area. And there are tons of animals and adaptations we could put in this um, biome. But we're just going to talk about the toucan. The toucan, his bill is his adaptation. And its function, it's um, shaped like that. And it's so long so it can reach f fruit. I was going to say reach food, which is also food. It can reach fruit when the branches are too small to support the weight of the bird. Um... It's, so it's got its long bill for that, and it's able to grab the fruit that way. Um, but again, there's tons of other animals that have adaptations in the rainforest. Um, and then next we have the grasslands. And there, um, oh, I forgot to write on the left-hand column. We'll come back to that. So this is the baobab tree. The baobab tree it has a super thick trunk so that it stores water um, when it rains there. It doesn't rain there a lot, um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but in grassland areas, there's usually not many trees, and it's a lot of small bushes and shrubs um, and grass. So there's few trees, and it's because trees can't live without water. And this tree has been able to adapt to store water for long periods of time so it will have water during the dry periods I think this is it yeah so during the grasslands here there's limited rain I forgot to write that earlier so make sure you add that um, and the other one here we have the grass and you can see it's turning brown and the reason it turns brown is um, it temporarily stops photosynthesis and conserves water. So let's think about that. We've talked about photosynthesis already. Flash back to the equation. 6H2O plus C6H2O. Oops, wait. So 6H2O plus, C, plus 6 CO2 plus sunlight produces or equals C6H12O6 plus 6O2. So it produces sugar and um, oxygen. Well, if it is taking water um, to go through photosynthesis it's using energy to do that and it's um, taking up the water and so this way grass turns brown to conserve water let's see I might have written all over this photosynthesis equation too um, okay so that has all of our um, biomes and some examples of animals that live in those biomes and some examples of their adaptations and the function that those adaptations provide. So that's all for this fun sheet. There is one more after this um, that we're going to talk about and that will be next.